for joining my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you all about a few key points that will help you start your business. Um, I get a lot of messages um, asking me how did I do it, how did I get started, um, people needing help. So I just feel I took in order to get started in all of my businesses and that I feel they could help you as well. So the first thing you should be doing is researching your business that you're trying to do. You want to make sure that you're very knowledgeable about what you're doing. Um, you never want to start anything and you don't know anything about it. You want to be very detailed in what you're going to be doing. Uh, it's very important because you're going to have a lot of questions being asked to you when you start and you want to make sure that you know the answers. Um, you need to know the legal side of it, the rules, regulations, uh, all your permits, all your license you might need, um, the quality of the product, the different options of products. Uh, you need to be able to compare and contrast different products because some people might be confused depending on what you're selling. For instance, me, I sell raw Indian extensions. And so um, a lot of people are not familiar with the correct terms of the hair quality because of how the industry has been all set up now. So a lot of people are confused. So I have had to educate them on what's the difference between raw hair and hair that has actually been manipulated. That's definitely been a challenge um, because people are so used to one thing and so whenever you're bringing up the real deal of quality, it takes some time. So just like whatever you're doing, you might have to explain and so um, a lot of people are not familiar, people just don't know. And depending on the quality that you're selling, you have to go the extra mile. So it's very important that you know everything about your business. It's never good for someone to come up to you and to be able to tell you more about your business and what you know. If that's the case, you're not ready. You need to research some more, whether that's on Google, calling city official offices, um, talking to people within the industry already, watching other helpful videos, um, whatever it takes, you need to research and you need to really familiarize yourself with what you're going to be doing. Because remember you guys, this is your passion. So you want to take it very serious. Okay. The next thing that you need to be very mindful of when starting a business is that you have to invest in it first. You know, before you expect for people to uh, buy things from you and you know, to support you. You have to invest in you and support you first. And what better way to do that than to get samples, to get that t-shirt made, to go ahead and start using that product yourself. You know, you have to be the product of the product. So if you're selling a t-shirt, you need at least one made. Wear it, show it to us, you know. Um, if you're selling hair, wear the bundles, let me see it. How does it look on you? You know, if you have some type of makeup line or skincare line, you use it first. Let me see how it looks on you first. How does it do your skin? You know, because that's very important when selling things, you all. So you're going to have to invest time and money. And this is a part that a lot of people don't like because they want to find one vendor, jump straight to say, I have a business. And they have missed so much because they don't know the quality. Um, they don't know the vendor's minimum, the manufacturer's minimum, um, saying, well, then I'm running into a lot of issues. I'm running into a lot of problems. Yeah, so before you say business, you need to take some time out first to invest in that product and whoever you're going to be working with while selling that product because that's going to be very important. You need to know your shipping times. You need to know all of that. All of, that, all of those things are going to matter whenever it's starting. So I would highly suggest for you to take the time to invest first, to make sure that you are spending your money on items that you're interested in to see the quality of it. Quality is key. You have to have a good product with good quality. This is what brings customers back, the good quality, consistent quality. Um, Everyone's going to be selling something, but the quality may not be the same. And so that's what I always tell people. The quality of the products that I sell are top tier. You know, I don't like to half step in my businesses and I don't like giving you something that's not worth the money because you are giving me your hard earned money. I want to give you a good product. So that's how you need to feel about your business and whatever you're selling. And if you're afraid to buy samples or afraid to try it out first or afraid to, um, you know, experiment and try different things, then I'm going to be honest with you. Entrepreneurship is not for you. 
So you may want to consider that first, you know, it's all a big risk and that's all entrepreneurship is. So the next step that you want to consider is making sure that you are networking. Networking is very important. Um, I found that a lot of the opportunities that I was presented with is because I just simply networked. I talked to people that I didn't know. And a lot of you all are going to have to get out of your comfort zone of talking to people that you know. You have to talk to people that you don't know. You have to go to events that maybe your friends don't want to go to, but you need to go. You know, you may not always have a partner. You know, you may have to do this on your own, and so that's fine. Um, but when you when you network, you meet new people, you get involved in different groups. Um, they expand your mind to different things. You all can work together. You never know how networking will be. They might be looking for someone to help, to fund. You know, um, they might be looking. Um, for what you're doing and they didn't know how to get started and maybe you all can come up together. Um, I love going to different business seminars and networking groups because they also motivate me and they also give me the extra fire and motivation I need to continue on the journey of starting a business. And so I suggest that when becoming or wanting to become an entrepreneur, you know, don't take, the, don't miss those opportunities of going to those webinars and seminars of networking and getting more uh, additional information and motivation on starting your business because that's truly what set me on fire to say, you know what, I really do want to be an entrepreneur. So um, that's very good to do. And plus you have different avenues of selling your product. You know, once you network with certain people, you'll ne you never know what they're needing or what they're looking for. And so if you network with them, you, you might be the missing puzzle piece to their plan. And so that's why it's important to network. You have a lot of opportunities are open when you network. Um, okay, and that's very important that you have to understand is your price points. Um, whenever you, you know, figure out what you're gonna be doing, you know, start talking to some people, you know, you're putting some things together of how you figure you want your business to be. You wanna make sure that your price points will get you back your money plus a profit. Okay, so a lot of people don't understand this, but a lot of wholesalers don't allow you just to buy one or two of something. It's very rare that they would give you that option. Most of the times you have to spend a minimum amount of dollars or you have to purchase a certain amount of product. Uh, whether that's a hundred or they want you to spend $2,000 first or whatever that is, you wanna make sure that you know that. Okay, with knowing that, that will help you save better, which means that you're going to have to sacrifice a lot of different things, like going out to eat all the time, getting your hair done all the time, getting your nails done, clubbing, hanging out, spending unnecessary money. You don't need that right now. You can wait. There's a lot of times I've had to cancel trips. I've had to cancel uh, going out with my friends because simply I was working to save up for a bigger goal. Okay, and that goal was I need enough money so I can buy my first batch of inventory for my business. That's going to be very important. You need inventory. Like I said, I, I know a lot of us are just getting started and it's very expensive to have things on hand, but it's a lot better when you can have those things on hand because you can make the sale a lot quicker. For one, people can see it and they have access to it right there. So when they have to wait for it, um, they will still buy from you, but it kind of makes them less excited supposing them having it right now. You know, that's the whole convenience of shopping online or shopping with you directly is getting that product immediately. That's, that's key. So whenever you are coming up with those price points, you want to make sure that um, you're not lowballing yourself. You know, you are new and you know you are getting started um, but you don't want to lowball yourself now in the beginning of a business you will lose before you gain so just remember that that somehow some way you're going to have to give a little to get a little that's just that's how it goes so if you're not interested in doing that you know then i'll tell you as well you're not ready to be an entrepreneur uh, because it's going to take a lot to get started and to build up that integrity with you 
and your customer and your brand, you know, so you, you're going to have to sell it to people and let them know that what you have is great and you have to really sell it to them of extra step to bring people in. That's very important. You know, you're going to make it up later, but that, that beginning stage and phase of a business is always going to take a little bit more out of you because you really have to get in people's good favor. You know, you really have to sell it to people, you know, um, but that doesn't mean to short sell yourself, but that does mean you might have to give a little bit up, you know, um, so be mindful of that. Another important piece when starting a business is making sure that you all are picking a brand that represents you or your personality or something that you're very in tune with because this is going to help you advertise it a lot better. When you pick something that's bland or blah or not really you, it's really hard to sell that and people can tell. Um, for instance, I like um, astrology. I love astrology. So even though it's kind of out the norm of what someone would typically name their business hair company, um, I decided to do it because I knew there's a lot of, I know there's a lot of different things that I can do with that name and that I can venture out with. So I picked that name because it's in tune with me and it's me. You know, I love astrology. So you have to pick something that for one is very memorable, um, that's catchy, and that's also kind of simple all at the same time. People don't like long names, you guys. They're not gonna remember all those long names. I know everybody wants to put their name in the business, and sometimes it's just not a good fit because overall, you want that person to remember the brand and the product, not necessarily you sometimes, personally. So if you have a good catchy name, and um, it's kind of short and simple and to the point and lets them know exactly what they're going to be buying, then it makes it, uh, you know, more memorable for them. They'll say, oh yeah, you know, uh, like for instance, my business Sips. It's easy, it's short, it's catchy, it's memorable. So guess what? Oh yeah, we're going to Sips. Oh yeah, I just left Sips. You know, Sips has something to do with you drinking, right? It gets straight to the point straight to the point of what I'm doing or of what that business is doing and what it has to offer. So that's something that you want to take into consideration is to shorten those names and make them really catchy. You don't always have to make them your name or your initials um, all of the time. Look at some of your uh, uh, high name brand products, you guys. They have nothing to do sometimes with their names. And if it is their name, it's a very unique name, like a very unique name that sounds, looks, you know? So other than that, you wanna to stick to what their product is selling. That will also help you. Um, you, you know, it's, it's, it sounds weird, but sometimes that's what makes the sale in a business is a short name to say. Um, you wanna be mindful of the colors you use. I had to learn this too. I want to use all the colors because I love all colors and I realize that's probably not the best thing to do because it looks kind of childish. So considering the type of hair I'm selling, the quality is very good, you know, like very looks. So I don't want to uh, come off as kiddish with my brand. So I have to step my branding up because when someone's spending that type of money with you, they want to feel like they're really getting that luxury experience. And so if it's too kitty or too colorful, you know, and doing too much with the logo, they may not feel like they're getting that full experience. You know, they may not be that happy to brag about where they got something from. Remember, people love bragging where they spent their money at, especially if they're spending a high dollar. Trust me, they do. So, you know, finding simple logos, simple colors, maybe one to three colors, you know. Also, I see a lot of people using their face um, as their logo, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there's just some brands and businesses that just doesn't fit. It just, it just doesn't, and it throws it off, and it may make people, you know, not interested in the product. So just be mindful of those little things, you know, to tweak, you know, because those, it actually does make a difference. I never realized that 
until now I'm starting my own businesses and I'm actually hearing people's feedback and I'm seeing how they respond to certain things, it matters. The name, the logo, the color, all of that matters. That's going to help target your uh, audience. And so if your, if your product or sometimes your brand comes off as, you know, maybe a certain age range, but you're targeting a different age range, you know, you may not make those sales like you're wanting to because people are confused. It looks like you're trying to, you have a brand that looks like you're trying to sell to high schoolers but you're really trying to sell to people in their mid twenties. That's a huge difference. So your branding has to change drastically in order to catch the mid 20 group attention. If not, you're going to have a product that targets high schoolers, uh, but you're not even targeting them. So you wonder why you're not making a sale. So things like that, you know what I'm saying? Th take into consideration. Be mindful that your target audience may not be your friends and family. It, it may not be um, the, the person you talk to every day, and that's okay. A lot of people get so caught up in their family and friends, not liking their posts, not uh, supporting them, not purchasing anything with them. You have to think about it. If it's something that they're not interested in, just in general, it doesn't matter if it's you or whoever it is, they're not going to. And so that's something that you have to get over and push forward with. You need to start joining groups on Facebook. That's all some people talk about is whatever you're selling, there's people out there that that's all they talk about, that's all they do. Um, they have a whole group of people who are probably going through some things you're going through and y'all can learn together. That's a part of networking as well. Um, they have a lot of different groups, uh, group Facebook pages that I found very helpful in any business venture that I've wanted to start. I always look to Facebook and say, let me look into a group and you'll see the different mistakes, you'll see the different, uh, learning steps uh, they will provide different tools for you different websites just for you um, some people that have pages where that's all you can do is sell your item on there and that's how i've made most of myself sometimes you all is through facebook groups you know um people that i don't know that don't know me those are the people who are typically going to support you because that's what they want that's what they're interested in it's okay to post it you know on your personal page for your personal timeline, but just be prepared that probably 80% of your timeline may or may not, you know, be interested in what you're selling. You know, so that's just the reality of that. And I know it kind of hurts because you would hope for everyone to share your post and, you know, encourage you and support you, but they're not, they're not. And so you have to get over it. It's a whole world full of people that are looking for your service and product and that would love to support you. Okay, so don't don't stunt your business because you're tripped off of your friend not buying something from you or your family not liking your posts. It's happened to me multiple times. And so, yeah, like I said, it hurts, but you gotta keep moving on. Right. Just know that in this process, because I've said a lot, as you can see, this step is gonna help build your stamina because there's gonna be a lot of times within this stage that you are going to feel defeated and you're going to feel tired and you're going to feel like you're not getting anywhere. You're going to feel like you're taking two steps forward and 10 steps back. This happens, but I appreciate that in this stage because it helps you whenever you get started, because there's going to be a lot of slow days. There's going to be a lot of bad days. And so you have to keep pushing forward. There's going to be a lot of days that all you have is you. That's going to be a lot of days. You have to be your own cheerleader. And so instead of you getting discouraged in this researching stage in the beginning phase of your business, take this as a learning experience and to realize that this is building your stamina to keep pushing um, in what you're doing, you know, and try to keep yourself encouraged. It is hard, but that's why I say um, hang around like-minded people. Join those groups of people. You know, you're on social media all day long. Why not make it count? You know, be involved in something that's really your passion. Make your timeline mostly about what you are selling or doing, you know, because that will keep you encouraged. A lot of those groups that I've been in, some days I feel down about some things and I get on there and I see some ladies going through the same thing and we all uplift each other. And so that's what it's going to take. It's going to take a supportive support system that may or may not be someone you know, and that's okay too. So just keep that in mind. Um, um, for you all who are still, 
you know, not for sure about your business or you're still needing a little confirmation, I will tell you all also, we're online all the time on social media. Look on your timelines. People will tell you exactly what they are in need of or what they would like more of. Every time I've thought about starting a business, that's the first thing I see. Someone on my timeline talking about what I'm thinking about doing. And what I mean by that is supply and demand. They're asking about good quality bundles or where's a good hangout spot or what's a good this and that. You'll see people talk about that or we need more of this or we need more of that. Feed into that, tap into that because I'm telling you that's free game for you to elevate and take over in that business, to dominate in that. And so pay attention to your timeline. There's a lot of times that I am on social media. It's not really for enjoyment. It's because I'm researching what people are interested in. You know, what they might like, what they might actually tap into, you know, actually support that they might actually need. So that's something that you want to make sure you're doing is look at your timeline because people are going to tell you what they're needing or what they want more of or how they want that. Just because someone's doing it this way, you might have a better way of presenting that with better quality, you know, so just don't get discouraged. You know, those are just different ways that I found confirmation when starting my businesses or, you know, or if I'm about to start, if I'm on the right track or not, it helps me feel a lot better before I go, I don't know someone to buy it. I just look at my timeline and every time someone confirms to me that this is a business in me. Okay. So, um, those are just my key steps, you guys. And Another thing I want to tell you all, even through all of those steps, sometimes we just have to be realistic with ourselves to say, maybe this is just a hobby. Sometimes it's it's not a business for us. Sometimes it's just a hobby and that's okay too. You know, because once you put business on something that you're doing, the expectations goes up. I'm going to be honest with you. The time management, the professionalism, the quality of the product, the consistency of a product, um, all of that stuff is going to matter, you know, and people are going to hold you to that. So I know everyone wants to say they're a business owner and that they're a CEO and, you know, whatever, because I get it, you know, it's a popular thing to say and do nowadays. Some people aren't taking it as serious and it ruins the experience for some and it messes up chances for others who are serious in that particular industry. So I just want you to be realistic with yourself at the end of the day. Is this something that's going to be a hobby for you where you just do it sometimes or when you feel like it um, or just for fun? Or is this something that you're gonna really take serious and do? And um, because that's also gonna help save you a lot of time and a lot of money. So throughout all of this, you have to use your own good judgment, be realistic with yourself, be passionate about it, and um, you know, you'll go very, very far. And so good luck to all of you beginning entrepreneurs, uh, all of you all who wanna be an entrepreneur, or we're already in this thing, you know, we got this. So just, you know, just always be encouraged. It's always a learning process. It'll always be trial and error. The main goal is to keep going, moving forward. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you all liked the video. If so, give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and I will be with you all next week.